Hey, Kari Mäkelä, welcome to this summit. It's fantastic that you got the time to join, join the summit. Kari and I have been working several years together, and I know Kari as one of the CEO who has the straightest back, as we say in Finnish. You, your crew knows when you have it, you always come very frankly with your opinion. And, and I really think that's, that's a great, great uh, characteristic to, to work with. Thank you, Kari, for joining here. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> your kind words, uh, words doesn't uh, tell uh, all of those things what I have done. Actually, I have uh, been in, in many companies and, uh, and uh, made many, many things in there. But uh, to lift some issues there, I have made uh, nine successful exits. And, uh, and if I can count them nine right, exits. And, uh, furthermore, I have been involved in two IPO exercises and one through merge. And yeah. so yeah, like many many things I have been involved in this, these companies. But yeah. you're, you're right. I'm an active investor, advisor, and management consultant and board member. And yes, I'm, I'm also acting as a chairman in, in one company. Yeah, yeah. So you you have a really view over the, the companies, uh, small small and medium sized companies, where you are mostly active here. So, uh, Kari. Uh, how did you evolve to this to this position you are today? How did your career start? Well, actually, my, my roots are in the software industry in which I have been operating um, almost 30 years by now. So I have co-founded companies, managed them uh, on the sea level, grown and taken them to the international markets. And uh, most of these cases, uh, the story has ended to an exit. So as I said earlier, so I, I made nine exits uh, so far. Uh, and actually in every company that I have been involved, the software business uh, has been in, in the core. Uh, Kari, what is the number one situation where you got the most kicks of, of in your career? What do you remember? What is the super story? <laughs> Well, I would say that this uh, this complete transformation of, of Opus Capita is, is one of those uh, great stories that I have. Of course, there are many of those. Uh, yeah. but that's clear. Met, that's where we met. Exactly. That's where we met. So, uh, what do you remember about Opus Capita, the situation you were in when you realized that you have to crystallize a strategy? Mm. Well, this uh, fintech company, as uh, people call, call this one of the industry-related companies nowadays, uh, had uh, revenues uh, some 10 million, and it was basically a family company. Everybody knew each other, were good uh, godfathers and good mothers uh, to uh, other kids, uh, you know. Yeah. Everything was calm, predictable, and to some extent uh, stagnated until a loss-making year was uh, was faced and that trigger uh, triggered a need uh, to to have a, a big change in the company um, and that at that time i was in the board of directors and i was asked to take the reins of, 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 uh, of the company as a ceo and uh, I kicked off a complete uh, transformation process and i executed that in three and a half years together with my executive management team and or actually together with, uh, with everybody in the company. We basically changed everything in the, in the company that uh, one can imagine. Okay. Uh, the transformation included, of course, uh, the strategy formulation and uh, crystallization on one, one page, actually. Yeah, I remember that the first year when you started there, so you, you, you were forced to do some kind of basics work wasn't it like that <laughs> yeah well actually we didn't kick off this uh, strategy uh, renewal or strategy formulation and crystallization uh, in the first year i thought that there is so much things to do first and uh, yeah and then only after after a year or so i thought that okay now now we have put some things in place and now we have time to to <coughs> look into uh, strategy side as well but, but what was the kind of need? What, what pain did you feel there when you made this decision to start the strategy? Well, there was no clear uh, direction for the company. Nothing that, uh, that everybody knew. Where we were going, 
what was our our purpose, uh, what was our mission, uh, vision, all those uh, basic things were, were missing. Yeah. And, and 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 how did you do the transformation? How how did the process go? <laughs> um. So at that time, some I some ten years ago, I was not that experienced in in formal strategy work. I had done it, but uh, not in a certain way or, or format, more or less with uh, with homegrown or cowboy way, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, but uh, luckily, I met you, as, as you already said, uh, and uh, you introduced me to your ideas and, uh, and the way to, to crystallize, to crystallize uh, strategy on, on one page. And uh, that was a starting point to a process which uh, basically ended uh, when the company was sold in a trade sale. Yeah, it was quite nice. And I remember that you were so eager to, to, to involve the whole group. Yeah, that's, that's true. I, I involved them a lot. I, and I, I personally communicated on the, on the process, uh, achievement, challenges, you name it, continuously. Every note from me or, and uh, every company get together included something related to strategy. Yeah. Uh, the, the strategy was including, uh, or strategy including values uh, was continuously present in, in everybody's uh, day or life, uh, work life, so to speak. Kari, do, uh, you, do you still remember the values that you crystallized then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was about to come to that. Uh, by saying that even I created some uh, giveaways uh, like uh, like this uh, pocket mirror with oh, yeah. and, uh, and some presents that uh, that had a, had a meaning such as this this clock that you see here and luckily it has uh, uh, it has uh, the brand name which uh, holds the the first letters of of, of our values I C E I S. So that was uh, that was way to me to communicate and, and uh, maintain the strategy and the values present here on on daily basis. No one basically was uh, was able to escape or hide from the strategy and, work. And I I stand for I in the I stand for I was what C was what and E was what. Do you remember? <laughs> Good question. Let me try. Uh, innovation, um, uh, courage, and experience. That's it. And you had the word courage there. Yes. And I think it was so imp important, important word that, that there was a brave attitude that we have to change. What, how did you use the mirror? What was the idea with the mirror? <laughs> the idea was because so, so many things needed to be changed in the company. So basically required looking at the mirror by, by everybody, including uh, board members, owners, uh, executive management team members, everybody in the company, they needed to do a change. And the, the kind of main tool for the, for the change is to look at the mirror first, what you have done, what you haven't done, and what you could do in the future better. Yeah, 10 years ago, we, we didn't have all the IT tools that we are communication tools that we have today in place. But now when you are working, you are the chairman of the board of one IT company and we did the strategy there also. But now we are using much more communication tools. Can you a little bit, Kari, tell about that experience? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You are referring to another company which uh, was to some extent in the, in the in similar situation as, as this earlier one, this uh, fintech company. And uh, even though the size of the company was uh, much smaller, yeah. nicely grown company, large international brand name uh, companies as, as customers, excellent and robust technologies, underlying and, and so on and so forth. And uh, the founders and the team at that time had done a good job, but, but that obviously that wasn't enough. And uh, path, uh, this path faced uh, growth challenges. So there was, again, a clear understanding that something needs to be done uh, among the founders and, and owners. Uh, um, but, uh, but no knowledge, no experience, what and how to take the company to the, to the next yeah. level. 
And we, we again, we kicked off the uh, SRASI implementation and we took a very modern approach to the SRASI implementation. We used various digital tools such as uh, Zoom for online video communication and uh, online trail boards for presenting, documenting and, and voting and so on and so forth. And basically, everyone in the company was involved and contributed with, those, uh, with these tools. Yeah, we had also the ZEF as a, as a survey tool and, True. And, and we did all that. And I remember that you said that one of the reasons for the strategy is that they tried to make an exit, but the valuation was quite too low. That could be interesting, Karim. Can yeah, you? yeah, true. So, um, but that also relates back to the kind of transformation that, uh, that the company needed. I, I don't know whether the, the companies who did uh, or the potential candidates to, to acquire this company, whether they did that thorough DD that they realized that actually there are some challenges in this company and it needs to be transported before it is kind of uh, ready to be taken over. So uh, yeah, I think that that was a conclusion. Or well, there were many many reasons uh, uh, explained by the the can bio candidates, but uh, but I think that the main main reason yeah. underlying was uh, was there that the company was not ready to be acquired it wasn't kind of uh, matured enough yeah that's true yeah and, and then the question was that should we just give a makeup and try to sell it uh, you know put shiny papers around the package or, or should we really try to make the company better to be more <laughs> ready to be sold <clears throat> yeah okay and and then, uh, so if if we talk about this company now the second one Kari, so so the, can you comment the, the way what, what the, the whole process when we did the strategy one page or how was that <clears throat> yeah we basically uh involved everybody in the company with these tools that uh, that was mentioned so it took a couple of couple of months there were different workshops and, and sessions smaller groups, entire company involved, and, uh, and uh, we documented everything. We got lots of good feedback from, from people in terms of sort of false comments uh, about the process, but also lots of feedback of what should be done, what is not working, where should we go as a company, and so on. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really good uh, process. And, and how, how, many, how many persons in this company? Was it 45 or something well, like that? Less than, so. less than 50, 50 people were involved in this. Yeah. It, and, it, and internationally, they were located in different countries also. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. There were people from, uh, at least one time, there was one guy from Japan, one guy from Italy, those Danish guys, and uh, at least from two sides in, in Finland. So. Yeah. 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 That's not an issue if you have these tools. If, if, if you remember, what I learned from that process was that in the beginning, for instance, when we start trying to, to articulate the purpose of the company, and I remember that there was quite a lot of techno babble involved. Do you remember that size? And then when we tried to go the benefit beyond the techno babble technique, do you, could you comment, Kari, that might interest you? Yeah, it was it was really difficult for people to get get uh, or get out of the technology phase, so to speak. So they, every everybody was just discussing about the products and and technologies and all those things involved in the, in the product. But but there are so many other things uh, related to customers and markets and competitors and. And so on. Uh, if if you are formulating strategy, yeah. So it yeah, it was big learning learning process for the people as well. Yeah. Think How about many other things than, than not not only technology. What is your view about how many focus areas or must wins can you have in a company? What is your experience now? You had done many of these. Hmm. Well, one one of those uh, those traps that people. Normally, 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 are kind of fall into is uh, is that they try to do too much. Yeah. So that's that's clearly clearly the thing. Less is more. I mean, 
select uh, only a couple of those uh, focus areas, max three, I would say four if you really need that, but uh, three is, uh, is kind of the right, right number for those. Don't yeah. take too much on your, on your plate. That's clearly one of those, those uh, kind of recommendations what, what I have. Kari, in the first company that where we met this Opus Capita, do you remember how many focus areas and goals below the focus areas we had the first year? Do you remember? First year we had four focus areas and we had uh, four underlying uh, goals under each. So uh, basically 16, 16 altogether. Yes, and then, then when we updated the ne next year the, the strategy, do you remember how it went then? Yeah. So we reduced uh, the uh, focus areas by one, so we had only three focus areas and yeah. was it nine or ten altogether. No, nine. It was nine. Yeah. Yeah. At so, first year, I remember that I tried to, you know, speak speak very well about, hey guys, it's too much, but, but the, the management team, they didn't accept that. They, no, they said we have to do all this. Yeah, yeah, but that's the normal, normal yeah. uh, situation with, within these companies. So many things need to be done, but yeah. I mean, less is more. I mean, and you have those things that you really can, uh, can finalize and then move on. And uh, yeah, you can have only those uh, one quarter projects or two quarters, uh, half a year projects and, and so on. Don't try to uh, have long projects and too many at the same time. And then we did that resourcing map. Do you remember, Kare? We took all, all, all key persons and we see how much, how much of that person's time does this goal take? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah I recall that. And uh, it was a good uh, eye-opening exercise because we saw that uh, yeah, people had uh, doubled the, the load that they possibly could, uh, could carry. More yes, but this years. super guy, this, this Janne, I remember, uh, Janne, he had 420 percentage need. Yeah, <laughs> even, even that, that, that extreme. Uh, yeah, and then, then, the, then that opened up the eyes and then we saw that no, we have to do that lesson. And the next year we came down to, to something that is optimum. But that is a learning curve. That is a yeah, learning. of course, but that's, that's what, clearly one of those traps that uh, I have encountered in, in, in other places as well. Yeah. But hey, then, then uh, because you are very systematic and you are very straightforward in your personal approach, I, I think that, that you are one of the best guys I met ever in this. That you. You, put, you put the focus and you go and everybody knows that that guy stands behind these decisions. So you are, you are so very trustworthy and I think they love you because of that. So you are a very strong kind of father figure. But you also, you listen, you take your people and you listen to them. That, that uh, I admire that. But now let's talk about the implementation career. We had this year clock, do you remember? <laughs> yeah, implementation in general, it's, it's a very, very important topic uh, in strategy work. People tend to think that uh, when the strategy is formulated, the job is done. But actually, it is just a... It's like an iceberg. That's the, the kind of uh, part, uh, part of the iceberg that you can see. And uh, the implementation part is the, the part of iceberg that you don't see. That, that's, the, that's the big, uh, big part of the work. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And uh, if you don't calendarize uh, or, or make a clear year clock for, for your job, I, I think that, that is uh, yeah. that's much more difficult to, to execute the job. But then the years came and, 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 and we went more and more to this agile type of strategy with the sector and that kind of uh, linear dots where you have to be. And, and so, so the development went then that, that the year clock somehow become less needed and we had more this kind of agility. What is your experience about Yeah, true. So in the, in the beginning, uh, we had this uh, strategy period of one year, and uh, when we ended, uh, we we uh, kind of uh, changed the strategy in uh, in uh, every six months more or less. We made uh, some uh, some fine tunings, and uh, 
we uh, omitted something away, we added something. So it, it became much more agile and, uh, and I think that uh, the work can uh, go even faster than that, even on a quarterly basis you should be, should be ready to, to do changes to your strategy, particularly yeah. when it comes to those, those uh, goals particularly and, and even, even breakthroughs. So. Yeah. Uh, what, what is your message to those who says that, that at least in bigger companies it's Im impossible to change the strategy all the time because it doesn't even have time to go down the hierarchy to the levels before the, the, the first level changes again. So <coughs> how, how does that suit smaller companies? So what do you think? Of course you don't change the, the real cornerstones. Yeah. As in, uh, like uh, your purpose or if you use a vision and mission, I think that those are more, more kind of stable ones. Yeah. Why, why do we exist? What do we do? And what do we try to achieve? And all, all those are kind of uh, basic components, I, I don't think that you necessarily change them. But when it comes to those kind of uh, focus areas and, uh, and particularly those goals underlying, I mean, um, world is changing so fast. I mean, you, you just yeah. cannot, uh, you cannot be stuck in, in the dose uh, for too, too long. Yeah. But what if you have uh, employees like that, that they are not so agile, that they want to continue their work and they won't want to check it monthly. So what is your medicine for that? <laughs> well, it takes time to get people on, on the same page, but when, when they are up and running with this process, I think that they can adapt to, to the agility as, as well. So uh, it just take time. You, you cannot require them to be agile and uh, change their way of working uh, on one spot, but uh, over one over period, uh, longer or shorter, they definitely they start uh, operating much more, yeah. more you know, uh, quickly. Yeah, and there, there are those who, let's talk about culture now, Kari. There are those who say that you made a transformation turnaround in the, in the first company. Then, but, but somebody says that you can't stretch the culture too much, that you have to go in steps. Do you have views on that? <laughs> well, I think that I, or we changed the culture. Yeah. But, but, but because, this, you know, because the culture was so kind of slow or stagnated family uh, owned company or family company culture not international agile modern uh, company at all so i think that the only way was to change the culture <laughs> yeah and you did it then by involving everybody too. yeah piece by piece involving and, and taking them into into strategy work and uh, yeah, many things, uh, also those uh, incentive uh, programs and, and all those, uh, those uh, goals, uh, what we made uh, for people from, from personal level. So there are so many, so many uh, components uh, in, in that. So yeah. Just have to change everything. And then comes this question of courage and bravery still because because uh, I know that in one of your companies, let's not mention which one, but in one of your companies, the management didn't have the bravery to, to, to make these changes. They didn't follow them through. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's, uh, if you want to make such a change, you have to be very, very systematic, uh, what you do. Yeah. And you have to be open, I mean, completely open and, uh, you have honestly co uh, communicate what is going on, what, what you have done, what you have, what challenges you have faced, uh, what achievements you have uh, made uh, in, in the company and it's, yeah. uh, it's a process. So you have to be, you have to be very communicative uh, all the time. Yeah. Uh, Kari, I also want to ask you a, a question about the meaning of, of egos. This is a bad, hard one. <laughs> this is a hard one, but but I've seen it so much that there is this leader ego who, who is all, might be the problem. Not so much in in your company, but that I know that you have working in. But maybe in the other ones that you have seen, 
over 10 company from very very over 10 companies from a very close close very close view so uh, how about egos and the leader leader ego if it's some, somehow against what it needs to be done or it's an obstacle there could you comment that <laughs> Well, if this person and uh, his or her ego is, is uh, kind of stopping you doing things, then obviously this is the wrong person and the, yeah. and the company. And uh, I don't think that uh, that the big egos uh, are really needed. I think that what you are really what you really need that they are good perform teams, teams that work together, and uh, the team forms the ego altogether. So uh, no big echoes within the team, but of course strong people and, uh, yeah. and but, uh, people who who can also agree on things. And then when some uh, arguing on on things are done, then people just go in one different direction and uh, yeah. no no different voices around that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kari. Awesome. I, I think it's. You have so much experience now from seeing the different companies and and how many how many exits have you made once again? <laughs> uh, if if I calculate all of them, uh, they are all together nine exits. I have and made. how many IPOs have you done? Two IPO uh, projects. I have been involved one as a CEO running that. Uh, it was year two thousand. Well, everybody knows what happened in year two thousand. We had to. Yeah, you turn just before we went uh, went public there, and then I have been uh, in one very recent uh, IPO as a board member in, in that process. Yeah. So how is it to do an IPO? Do you enjoy it? <laughs> of course, there are there there are many benefits uh, around that. You get more publicity. You get you your company get much more trustworthy and. Uh, it helps your business. No one comes anymore to ask you whether you're going to stay in the business next uh, five years. It, it's kind of given that when you're public, you are here from here to eternity. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not, of course, the truth. But but anyway, small companies they have this uh, credibility uh, challenge. But if you if you go public, then you don't have those things. But of course, uh, you have to you have to be very careful what you say publicly, what you do, and all those uh, governance issues. What you have, you have to you have to be very strict there. So it is it is demanding, of course. But there are also yeah. hey, still about the meaning of a of a good strategy in the exit case. Could you comment that? Um, yeah, I think that that's uh, one of those things that uh, definitely will will uh, um, reassure or uh, increase the value of the of the company. If you can demonstrate that you have clear strategy, it's working, you are growing, you are making money, people are enjoying being in the company, you have good products, good customers. Uh, based on everything based on the strategy that you have formulated and uh, crystallized uh, i think that that's a clear evidence that the company is a value for money yeah yeah true so kari what would you be your advice to to small business leaders now in in in, in 10 to 25 person companies maybe 40. so what would you say that what have you learned concerning strategy <laughs> Um, according to my experience, uh, you should really admit that you are not experienced and competent enough to do okay. it by yourself. I mean, you just cannot. <laughs> so seek help uh, where you where you think that you need. Be honest there, and, and uh, yeah. And uh, in in our case, uh, what you referred earlier, or we discussed earlier, this obstacle that. I clearly admitted that I'm not good in strategy, so I need some help. I need some assistance, and uh, of course there is a price tag for such a such a assistance. But but anyway, I think that it was value value for money, and uh, yeah, be honest there. Don't try to do 
everything by yourself. Wow, thank you, Kari, and and, uh, and a couple of other things. I, I mean, we have touched those issues already. So involve people as much as you as you can. Yeah, use those uh, those digital tools extensively. So yeah, okay, three things. Definitely. That was really good. And and last question, Kari, do can you live without a strategy? What is the really big benefit of a strategy? Why take the bother to, to plan not things like that? What is the upside? <laughs> of course, when you when you are a startup company in in a garage, you don't need that. You have those founders uh, sitting next to each other, and everything is discussed openly all the time and uncommunicated. But uh, when the company grows and when you have different uh, office sites and uh, more customers and, and so on. So you really need a, a clear statement what you are doing that you can convey to, to your customers, to your new employees. Uh, yeah, all those uh, those groups that you are in, uh, yeah. involved. So you, you need tools to be specific, have, have those uh, Elevate the pitches based on something, and everybody tells the same story, and so on. So it is kind of like a backbone for for your growth. Backbone. You have all those crazy things and values. You know. Hey, Kari, thank you, Master, for sharing this. I think many many people, many persons will now enjoy and think on these your words here. Hey, Kari, thank you for this, and and and. and Hope to see you soon again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. You as well. Thanks. Bye.